Hi everybody, Mrs. Kobani here. If you're watching the screencast, it means that I'm gone again. I know that we've missed two classes in a row, but that's okay. We're going to all get caught up together when we meet again on Thursday prior to your exam. Um, today what you're going to be working on is comparing and contrasting light and pigment. We've already studied what additive light can do and how you add light together and it gets brighter and brighter until it gets to white. And today we're going to look at pigment, which is the complete opposite. This is another entirely enriched activity. It's something that only you guys are doing, so your 8A comrades won't be uh, sharing in the same uh, activity today. If you're looking to get some extra help or extra information today, Mr. Moberg is available across the hall. He and his students are doing the exact same activities that you are today. We're going to start by opening up to page two and writing in our learning target of comparing and contrasting light and pigment and explaining color subtraction. For your warm-up, what I'd like you to do is sit with your table in fact, all the work that you're going to be doing today is with your table group. We're not going to be switching groups at all today. Uh, when you work, you're going to work in, at your lab station, and you're going to be working with your people that you're sitting next to. So uh, it's, it's going to be important that you follow that rule, even though you have a sub here. I have informed the sub that that's my expectation. Um, with your group that you're sitting next to, I'd like you guys to flip through your web quests that you completed last time. I'd like you to circle any uh, questions that were confusing or ones that you had discrepancies on so that when I return on Thursday, we can go over those together and go over the questions that were confusing or, or you had issues with. Um, after you do that, you're just going to put a smiley face in this warm-up section indicating that you did talk to the people at your table and you got that done. Go ahead and pause the video right now to do that warm up. All right, your homework tonight are pages 38 and 39. I think if you work uh, efficiently today with your lab group, you should be able to get those pages done. I wanted to remind you guys that your exam is on Monday. Today is actually the last day that you're gonna get any new content for this unit. Um, the test is different because it's all going to be written. There's no Schoology section at all to this test, uh, so you'll want to be prepared to that. We're going to go over the specifics of the exam next time. We will have an official review on Thursday where you'll get a review guide, and uh, we'll do some review activities. You'll get a chance to ask questions. And um, if you're feeling like you need more support ahead of time, there are two win sessions this week, one on Wednesday and one on Thursday. That's going to be sort of an open review time for you and your uh, classmates to come in and ask questions and get prepared for this test. I have been told in the past that this test is one of the harder ones that we've taken of the year, so you want to make sure that you're studying ahead of time and you get the help that you need. The last time you guys worked on studying the eye and the brain, we're going to review specific questions on Thursday. The most significant learning that I want you guys to be aware of is that the eye uh, has rods and cones inside of them. That ties directly to what we've learned about light in terms of the rods taking in the, the brightness of the light and then the cones detecting the color and how the cones are grouped together in red, green, and blue, which matches perfectly with our understanding of the primary and secondary colors of light. We're going to go over any questions that you guys have on Thursday, uh, so save those for Thursday. Of course, if you'd like to know them ahead of time, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email address should be written up on the board or you can ask your substitute for that information. Today we're going to learn about subtractive color, which um, completely contrasts with what we've learned about light. We talked about light and the primary and the secondary colors of light, and subtractive color focuses on pigment and it's entirely opposite, uh, which should give you some clues about what you're going to learn today. We know that for light, these are the primary colors and the secondary colors, and when you add them together, it gets brighter and brighter until it becomes white. The primary colors are red, green, and blue, again, which matches with the groups of cones that you have in your eyes. The secondary colors are really the true secondary colors are yellow, magenta, and cyan, because those are formed from equal combinations of the primary colors. Remember that red, green, and blue can make any secondary color uh, that's out there. We proved that when we looked at our phones underneath the microscopes. Um, so yellow, magenta, and cyan are really just the equal combinations of those primary colors and then they all mix together to make white or as bright as it can be which makes sense if I want light to become black I actually have to take away light uh, light is additive it gets brighter pigment acts differently pigment are things like ink and paint and markers and crayons um, it's something that we're more familiar with it's what you were taught about when you were younger in art class how red and yellow and blue were the primary colors and that's mostly correct um, 
but we're going to learn that it's just a little bit different. Red, blue, and yellow are not the exact primary colors. It's more like what you find in your printer. Um, what I'd like you to do is uh, pause our video, find some colored pencils, a uh, red, a green, and a blue, and try and shade together equal combinations of red and blue and see if you get magenta, or shade together red and green and see if you get yellow, or try mixing all of them together and see if you get white. Um, we've said that these are the primary colors for light. I want you to try and see, are these really the primary colors for pigment too? Pause the video right now, find those three colored pencils, and try to make some equal crosses somewhere inside of Patrick. All right, if you joined us back, you saw that when you mixed these colors together, it did not create the secondary colors like how we envisioned. In fact, if you tried mixing red, green, and blue all together, it didn't go to white. It went sort of a dark brown, blue, blackish color. And that's because um, pigment does not get brighter. Pigment gets darker. And that's what we mean by subtractive color. Pigment is something that subtracts light. So when you add it together, it gets darker and darker and darker until it becomes black. And that's completely opposite of what we understand about light. With light, when I add together more light, it keeps getting brighter until it becomes white. When you use pigment, ink, paint, markers, etc., and mix it together, the light keeps subtracting away until it becomes very dark and black. What I'd like you to do right now is pause our video. You're going to go to Schoology and watch, I'm sorry, not watch, but read the background information. Um, it's in the Readings and Documents folder. Uh, it's called Color Subtraction Pre-Lab Background, and it is assigned to page 37, so it should be easy to find. You might even want to open up to your pre-lab on page 37 so that as you read it, you can kind of reference your pre-lab. You may need to read this uh, background twice. It can be confusing, especially about the parts with t-shirts under different lights and how that relates to what we know about light and what we're trying to understand about pigment. So go ahead and pause the video right now, find that background reading and start reading that. Now what you'll do is complete the pre-lab on page 37. I highly recommend doing this with the people at your table. Again, we're not going to get up. We're not going to move across the room. We're not going to work with our friends. Today we're working with just the people at your table. I mean, I suppose those people at your table could be friends too. Um, but go ahead and work together to complete page 37 of your pre-lab. Um, and uh, work together on that. You will need some colored pencils. So again, if you want to grab a box from up in front of the classroom or if there's a box at your table already, you can use those to color in the pictures that you need for the pre-lab. Now that you've completed the pre-lab, I'd like you to go to this Google address right here to check uh, the pre-lab key. This is really important that you do check through it and you make sure that you have the correct information written down um, before moving forward. Hopefully you made any changes to your pre-lab that you needed uh, based off of the key. And now we're moving into how we're going to explore subtractive color. We're going to use chromatography to explore subtractive color. Um, chromatography is a process where you use um, different tools to separate pigment. It's used in a lot of different areas of uh, science, especially with uh, working in crime scenes and uh, identifying drugs, uh, but today what we're going to use is uh, to take some colors of pigment that are actually secondary colors of pigment and we're going to separate it using chromatography. And what you're looking at on the screen is what you should get for one of your chromatograms today. Uh, the results of it are really cool. You do have to follow the directions precisely to get good results, um, but you can obtain really awesome results uh, if you're careful. Uh, what you're going to do right now is pause this video to navigate to another video. Um, it's about four minutes long. It's my video that explains how to do chromatography, what you're working with, and kind of the results that you're looking for at the end. Uh, you do want to watch this video very carefully. You might want to watch it all together with everyone at your lab station because uh, you are going to work together with your comrades to obtain good results. If you um, If you don't pay careful attention to this video. You're not going to get the results that you need to analyze later. So it'll be important to watch it. You might even need to watch it twice to ensure that you're going to get the best possible results back at your lab station. 
All right, you're almost ready to begin. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do chromatography. You're gonna repeat that process that I demonstrate in the video four times. You're gonna do it with a black marker, a green marker, a red marker, and a blue marker. Incidentally, all four of these are secondary colors of pigment. So they should separate into the primary colors of pigment. That's why we're doing this activity. Um, each person at your lab group or in your lab group is going to do one of these colors. So you're going to have one person do the black marker, one do green, one do red, and one do blue. When you get your results at the end, you're going to cut them along the long uh, section and you're going to tape them inside of Patrick um, on page 38 or so. You, you are going to share your results for this. You're not going to do all four of them yourself. You are going to set up one um, of each of these colors and then clip the chromatogram results in half, um, or in quarters, I'm sorry, and share them with the people at your station. If you only have three people at your lab station, you're still gonna do all the colors, you'll just have one person do two of them. Um, don't be satisfied with poor results. If you mess up, you need to start over again and, and get better results again. If you need extra paper, the substitute has um, extra uh, chromatography paper. In case you did mess up, you'll throw away your bad results and then start again. It's really important that you don't let that ink get below uh, the waterline. Otherwise, you're going to end up with poor results. You also really want to start with that dry test tube before you begin, because if any sort of liquid touches the upper parts of the paper, the ink will separate in a way that it, you don't see uh, your clear results. Um, so pause my video right now. You are going to come back to my video after you get your chromatography set up. You're going to set up all four of those chromatograms and then you'll come back to my video because you want to give that time to process. You probably want to let it process for about 20 minutes to really get the colors to separate as much as they possibly can. I know it's uh, really tempting to rush it and grab them out of there before they're done, uh, but it is, it's incredibly important that you do allow them time to process. Uh, so pause my video, go set things up, and then come back again so that we can finish things up together. Okay, now that you're back, you're going to start working on your homework, which are on pages 38 and 39. Remember, again, you're going to use those scissors to cut your chromatography papers uh, in quarters along uh, the long way so that you can share your results with everybody at your table. Um, you'll tape that into page 38 or around page 38. I know it's going to be tough because there's not a specific spot to put your uh, results. Um, but you're going to work on pages 38, 39 to analyze your results. What you should have found is that the three primary colors of pigment are magenta, cyan, and yellow. Magenta, cyan, and yellow are the primary colors of pigment and they're subtractive. Each one of these colors subtracts a single primary color of light. So magenta subtracts green light, cyan subtracts red light, and yellow subtracts blue light. I know it's kind of mind bending. I know this is one of our most challenging concepts that we've covered. And believe me, we are going to go over it again on Thursday to make sure that things completely make sense. But again, if you're totally stuck about why things subtract certain colors, try going back to that background reading, maybe do some searching on your own, and talk to the people at your table to come to the same conclusion that the primaries are magenta, cyan, and yellow, and what they subtract. Additive light and subtractive uh, pigment are complete opposites. Uh, the primaries and secondaries are flip-flopped for each, and when you mix them all together, um, light creates white and pigment creates black. This is an important diagram that you might consider drawing inside of your Patrick somewhere, maybe on the cover, maybe on a page where you have space. Go ahead and feel free to use uh, the colored pencils in the classroom to make each of these uh, color loops because they are things that you're going to need to know for your exam. If you have extra time, what I'd like you to do is watch this Brain Pop video. You're going to navigate to the Google address that's there. It's about 3 minutes and 30 seconds long. It'll review what we've learned about light as well as what we covered about pigments. Remember that the password is, I'm sorry, the username is Edina PS and the password is Edina. Recap, you should have completed a warm-up on page 2, a pre-lab on page 37, you should have taped your data on page 38, completed the analysis pages on 38 and 39. Know that we're going to review next class, so any questions that you have, if you don't email them to me, we will have that review day on Thursday, and that your test is on November 21st. If you have even more time, I recommend watching What Color is a Mirror with this Vsauce guy. It's about five minutes long. And if you still have more time, you can start working on the vocabulary index on the second to last page, Patrick. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions.